Okay, writing utensils. So you just want something that you can use as you're making your measurements. So a pen will do, a pencil, marker. Those are your three writing utensils. That's something that I would use. So anything that you find lying around the house that you can write on paper with. Okay, so number two, let's go over how to use a ruler and how to take dimensions. So I'm looking at this slide on the PowerPoint that I'm sharing with you. And if you click number two, click this ruler website. And if you don't have an actual ruler, you can use this website instead. For today, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use an actual ruler that I have in front of me. But if you really wanted to and you had a weird size paper, you can just bring it up to the computer and measure it that way. And as you can see, it is true to size. So again, when you're looking at a ruler, you usually have a centimeter side and an inches side. Remember that the inches side has the lines more spread out, so the numbers are further spread apart, and the centimeter side, they're closer together. Okay, so let's look at if we're measuring uh, letter size. So a postcard size is four by six. I had a small piece of paper. Say I had a piece of paper like this. This is an old um, piece of paper. You can use this in your sketchbook. That just means that every single paper that you put in your sketchbook has to be this size. So let's just measure this. It looks about four by six. Let's double check. So I have one, two, three, four. It's a little bigger. It's actually five. Five. And let's see what this is. Seven inches. So it's five by seven. Five by seven inches. So even though I'm providing for you a video for materials, this is the video for materials, and four different videos on how to create your own sketchbook, four different binding methods, I want to see what you can do. So I'm literally just finding materials and seeing how I can different I can make them work in a variety of different ways. So it has to also be five by seven. So let's just say the other paper I have is newspaper. It would also be easier to take a piece of paper, line it up on the newspaper, put it flush against in the corner. You can use your ruler to make sure it lines up. Okay, and then just draw it and then since I have these papers already in a pile here, I can just cut it and then save me some time here. So I wrote my measurements, or I didn't write my measurements, I just trace where I'm going to cut. So always be careful, you're always cutting away from your body. paper to also cut the rest of my pages. So wow, look, I just cut all these. Four more is the minimum, right? Because we need 15, at least 15 pieces of paper. So let's cut four more. And actually, since I have so much paper here, I'm just going to make the best use of my material and cut the whole thing. Let's see, let's see how many pieces of paper we can get out of the rest of my newspaper. So remember to keep all your pieces of paper the same size. This is also cardstock. So cardstock is thicker than a perfect line. So even though I didn't know it at the time, I actually cut out a stack of paper that is ready to be hole punched. So let's just double check before I start to hole punch that it has the right amount of paper, at least 15 pieces. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the middle. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Awesome. Okay. I do not have a typical hole punch like that, so you're just going to find something that can punch holes in your book for your thread. So I'm going to show you really quick with just a pen. This will help you create bigger holes 
So I'm gonna take my template and just find my guides. So one, make sure that your pen is going through the shoe box and it's catching your hole punch so you're not sliding around dangerously. Okay, and then I create a bigger hole so it's gonna be easier for me to thread my strip. Here are some materials I was able to find around the house to use as hole punches. I have a nail that you would hang something on the wall with. I have an old earring. Again, this has a post on it. I lost the other earring and it's pretty much junk to me, so I don't care if I break it. This, again, is a special tool that is used for sculpture. It's like a chisel and it has a pointy end. And I have thumbtacks. So I'm gonna use this one just because it would be easier on my fingers to press down on to create holes. I'm gonna use a shoe box. I have a shoe box here that I'm gonna use to put my paper on. Now, before I punch holes in this, I have a template. For each of the four binding methods that I'm gonna show you in more detail, I create a template to make holes. So a template just has to be the same height and width as your paper, okay? So I found the middle of my paper, and this is the spine, where the spine is gonna be, the spine of the book, and I'm gonna just line up my template to the spine. So I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. One and a half of this. That's about right here. And all right, I'm just gonna make three holes. Okay, so I have a template. The template is just to make sure that your holes are gonna end up in the same place with every punch. So first, I'm gonna punch holes in my template before I punch it in my stack of papers. So, okay, I was gonna use the hole puncher. Just across the area that needs to be hole punched. So right in the middle. I'm just going to line it up here. Actually, this is going to work out better for me if I just line it up. So one, two, and three. Okay, so this is one option you can use to find your holes. And then since the holes are really small and I want to take a different tool that has um, a bigger piercing area, I just go back to where I initially made the incision here. Three. And now that I can kind of see through it, it would be easier to um, thread string through it. Okay. After you've punched holes in your book and it's ready to be bound together, you're going to look at the spine. So the spine is the part of the book where the binding is hinged to. Okay, so the binding is the string that's threaded and weaved through each and every single piece of paper so when you hold the book around all the pages don't fly out. You need binding for that. Whether you use technique number three, the Japanese book binding method, or you use technique number four the basic, the five prong, or in this case we did three prong, basic loophole method, you're gonna look at the spine. So just look at the spine, look at the edge of the book, and that's where you're going to, spine's gonna tell you how much binding material you use. So here's some examples you can use for binding material. This is ribbon, curling ribbon that you might use to wrap five times the amount of of um, the length of your spine. So since I have my pulling from the spool, three, four, half times five is 42.5. Just to be safe, I'm gonna pull a little bit more from my spool. This is called a spool, the thing that holds all your string together. I'm gonna pull a little more just to be safe because once you cut it, you're done. So you'd rather be safe with extra extra thread rather than too little so that your book doesn't get bound properly. So as long as you have 40 to 50 inches, you can use any kind of binding material you can find five inch book. So you're gonna look at the spine, right? The area that you punched your holes in and let's measure five times the length of the spine. One, I'm starting at the end, I'm taking the end of my thread, holding it down, one. Okay, I'm gonna take my and I'm gonna cut it from the spool. Okay, and this should be enough thread to bind my book. So if you have other items that you can you think would be useful for this project please share them 
as you saw as a substitute for a sewing needle I used a paper clip that would work just fine to help you sew I have the back of a business card that you can use oh and this in order to attach it to here I'll glue this here so I want to know what else what other materials do you think would come in handy for this project of course as you're collecting little things like the back of a of a receipt here and start collecting them so that when the day comes and you do have a journal entry due where you want to create a drawing or something and you want more space to draw then on that day you can glue it in you don't have to do this all at once like I just did with these two papers aside from the five main materials that are on this list Let's go over some materials that could also come in handy if you find them all over your, anywhere throughout your house. Here's something that I have, it's a cutting board. So if I were to use an X-Acto knife, which I do not recommend because they're dangerous and I'd rather you use scissors, unless you're being supervised of course, this comes in handy. Also if your workspace needs to be kept tidy, I would definitely line your table and then tape it on your table with newspaper or some kind of big protective paper and then tape it like I did here so just like newspaper when the time comes and you're gonna need a blank you know a blank page to work on I don't care what that page looks like I just want you to be able to free draw on it of course you could decorate this and paint this as is but then you might get the paper leaking through so you can start collecting smaller pieces of paper and glue and other types of glue if you have it if you have a glue gun I saw a lot of you in the survey did have a glue gun I have double-sided tape here and if you just have smaller pieces of paper I can look you can make a little collage and just take your glue and glue it to this newspaper so it's sturdier this is just one way that you can create a blank page and you can get creative with it if this is how you want your paper to look and you want to use the rest of the page, you want the rest of the page to be covered in newspaper, cool. But this is just one way. Sticky notes. I have an old it's cardboard and it'll also make your paper a little sturdier. I would definitely glue something down like cardboard with heavier duty glue, especially if you have a glue gun. This would work perfect. So this was <laughs> where I got my glue sticks from and I just turned it over and voila, you have a blank page. I would then take something like this and cover it up and then glue it down with glue. So binder clips or paper clips would work also. I have these fun things I found at the Dollar Tree. And I could use something like this to collect my blank pages that I'm going to assemble into my sketchbook. Also, this is the inside of... A gum wrapper. Draw on that just fine. 